Hello, I am Bhavani and today I will present our paper, Delivery Work and the Experience of Social Isolation for CSCW 2021. To begin with, it is important to understand the context of delivery work in India. At a macro level, gig work platforms have created over 2 million jobs since 2014. This combined with the unprecedented unemployment rates and the rising informality of work in the country has poised such platforms as a crucial part of the economy. It has changed urban life in India, catering to the needs of middle and upper middle class consumers. There are also growing variations of delivery services for medication, groceries, food and personal concierge services. Therefore, our focus is on delivery work with location-based labor. This physical requirement creates unique challenges that adds to our study of social isolation. Delivery work also varies from other platform work due to the use of public spaces and last mile connectivity for task completion. Hence, the paper addresses the question, how do delivery workers experience and respond to social isolation as a result of their work? To collect this data, we conducted 21 interviews with delivery workers. We recruited participants at three common food pickup spots known as cloud kitchens. The interviews ra lasted roughly 30 minutes. And unfortunately, due to COVID, Field work was halted and six participants had telephonic interviews. For our study, we took the theory of social isolation from Dutch scholars Hotulanis, Makielse, and Muisen from their book, Social Isolation in Modern Society. As we felt, it helped us contextualize isolation in today's world, specifically in the gig economy. From their work, we use Markielse's definition of social isolation as a lack of interrelational and instrumental support, where interrelational support would help workers create feelings of integration, involvement, and acceptance. Examples would be clubs and relationships based on identities and interests. On the other hand, instrumental support focuses on practical outcomes to help individuals. Examples would be mechanisms to provide financial aid, protect against sexual harassment, etc. Based on our work, our findings showed an array of responses by delivery workers to combat aspects of social isolation measured by the lack of interrelational and instrumental support, which we've simplified in this table. While looking at interrelational support, we observe increased alienation due to work structure and stigmas associated with delivery work. An example from our study showed that work structure forced and incentivized workers to work during weekends and holidays, where workers fear repercussions of being logged out if they take leave on those days, thus leading them to reduce spending time with their family and friends. In addition to this, Stigma and societal pressures also make it hard for workers to engage with their peers. In the quote above, the worker has said, if you are a delivery boy, then they will look down on you and they will speak down to you. I was scared in case my friends all saw what I do. Before, whenever there was any function, I would go and attend them. Now we, my family, are unable to go to these functions. When they, my friends, come and ask what jobs I'm doing now, I'm embarrassed. As seen from this quote, we see the worker internalizing the shame of work to the point that he actively avoids gatherings with his peers. This has also led to further social consequences, such as families being disinclined or unwilling to get their daughters married to workers in the sector. From our studies, we also observed that families also pressure workers to quit so they can marry and settle down. Due to such alienation and social anxiety, workers tend to form relationships with others who understand the difficulty of their occupation, often other workers. Though most work is done alone, engagements with peers while waiting for orders usually begin such relations. Because most workers tend to rotate around the same areas, many interact often, thus leading to conversations on locations, number of deliveries, customers, etc. 
Eventually, friend groups are formed and engagement continues online through messaging platforms like WhatsApp and Telegram. For instance, one delivery worker said, <clears throat> we have made a subgroup that's even closer for friends. For our boys, the ones we speak to more, we've made a separate group for them. In that group, we share whatever is bothering us. If there's anything, we put it on the group and it is very active. As we see from this quote, workers use the groups, chat, group chats as safe spaces to vent on an array of personal topics ranging from holidays, financial constraints, etc. While looking at instrumental support, a ma major difficulty that institutions fail delivery workers are the lack of protections against safety risks. Workers often cause safety risks by identifying certain characteristics. A fake order is defined by those that pay through the cash and delivery option with the drop location seen in a secluded location. They call risky deliveries blast zones, which often meant that the payment was again through cash on delivery options and again had isolated or vague addresses, but were also done late at night. For instance, one delivery worker said, right, that most of our friends have lost their phones. They got beaten up. So these kinds of things are there, but our customer support at nighttime, they don't respond. From the quote above, we see that such instances often lead to physical harm, stealing of their phones, which is their main source of income. The, so, the quote also highlights that in these moments, workers are given no support by the platforms. As mentioned earlier, most workers do their jobs alone, often juggling multiple physical hardships while also being easily identifiable due to institutionally mandated uniforms and packaging, as we see in the image above thus making them easy targets for such safety risks as well. When talking to workers, no additional safety mechanisms were put in place by the platforms. They were disinclined to rely on other institutions like law enforcement due to their previous history and biased social interactions. The lack of aid by the state was further exacerbated during the pandemic with the lack of a stimulus package given to those working in the gig economy in the state. Similarly, due to being defined as an essential service provider, forced delivery workers to continue working in the same manner as before while, leading, while dealing with the pandemic. Now, when we look at this quote, right? <clears throat> When I'm doing an order, I have a friend there. At midnight or even 3 a.m., then we will all do it together. If I am not there, then he will take leave. And if he is not there, then I will take leave. Like this, we are rotating every night. We also have a WhatsApp group. So if there's anything, I will put it on the group. Strategic work structures, like the one in the quote above, were created to replace formal institutional support, such as... <clears throat> Similar to how they combated the lack of interrelational support, workers use group chats and peer networks to combat fake orders and blast zones, as we see from the quote above. In summation, we believe that from the takeaways of alienation, stigma, and safety, delivery platforms must shift away from gig definitions of work, as many workers are employed for many years on such platforms and must be seen as places for professional growth to combat stigma. Platforms must also invest more towards adequate safeguards, taking into account the nature of work and work timings of the workers in question. Now, thank you for listening to this presentation.